Okay. Okay. So we're live. What I want to show, no, no, what I want to show you is the position. Tell me again the position you were in this morning. So this is a patient with right anterior canal BBBB um, or BBBD disorder, which uh, was, she came in initially with left posterior canal positive hall pipe findings, but there's also a little bit of right anterior stuff here. So we had to kind of go through and fix the other stuff, and now we're able to see this. So lay in that position you were sleeping in. So she was sleeping like that, <laughs> which is in the right anterior canal position. And then what did you do after that? Then up. you got up. You, so you felt a little dizziness there, right? Uh, At that no, spot. Slight. Slight. Like yep. I felt it coming on. I wasn't yes. actually dizzy, but I knew it was coming. You felt a sensation Definitely. shift. Definitely. Yes. I moved slowly over to my left. Mm -hmm. Doggy comes around. I go to pet doggy. Exactly. When I came back up about window height. Yes that's when the spinning That's occurred. awesome. So the trick for us was um, to say, is that right or left anterior canal? Because we know it's an anterior canal there. Um, the left, we checked both both left and post, left and right posterior canals are normal. Um, so with her though, she, even though she was, had her left posterior canal down in that second, left anterior canal position, in that second position, she actually was reaching and put herself more in right anterior canal. So that's why we suspected more right anterior canal. All right. Now let's do it. Let's do it. You're going to see a right anterior canal modified maneuver here. So turn her left, 45 degrees, yep. Come down. And with this patient, we know we can bring her down that fast in the manner we did because we've been treating her. With every patient, you, you don't want to necessarily do that type of um, maneuver, but we want to really activate that canal. So the faster we can bring her down, the more recruitment we'll get out of the uh, receptors in that vestibular pattern. pattern. Come on in. No, you guys see it, come on. Come on. Come on, Kelsey. Noted. Nice. So imagine that we have a cup in each position of her canals and we're trying to dump that cup out in the right anterior canal. And that's what we look at. Any dizziness there? No. Move her down a little bit, you know, and move her around. Just, yeah, exactly. Just kind of bring her around, see if you can elicit anything, you know. So we really don't know if this is a crystal issue or if it's a, just just a. There's BPBB and BPBD, benign paroxysmal, paroxysmal positional vertigo, and then positional disorder, which is just dysfunction. So it might just be a signaling issue from there. But that's good. Now you can bring it to our next position, which is position two, which would be the left anterior canal. So the opposite yeah, anterior so canal. Left. Keeping the head down at about a 45 degree angle. Yeah, tell her she's all set and they'll want to get her in tomorrow. Any dizziness in that position? No. Good. I mean, with you, we're not looking for a major eye movement. It's not a fresh, you know, like BBB. Okay. What we were talking about earlier, too, right in the other room, you were there, but is that some people who don't have like 
you know, they've had things for a while in the anterior canal or some of these areas, they compensate. And so it's harder to find that area. So you have to go in there and dig through and essentially fix everything else till it finally shows up. Kind of peel back the layers. Position three. All right, so you're going to move on to your back. Try to keep your head down. So position three, she's basically going to have the patient roll under her back. She's going to keep her right in that same position, which is going to right put her back. directly into the left yeah, posterior yeah, canal a perfectly. There. A little something there. Just a little something there. Yeah. yeah, a little bit of... Yeah, a little nystagmus. Yep. Yeah. Pretty slight, but... Yeah, when, we, when I did the final yeah. And that's lift. kind of the movement that you had... Yeah, it mimicked what morning. I did this morning, yeah. for sure. There you go. And that's the fun thing about this is you don't get it in every position, and it's not the same for every patient. So sometimes it's not till position three in this case, even though we listed it with the hall pike earlier. But she compensated quickly for it. So I think for her, she's able to compensate. Mm -hmm. Good settling. Mm -hmm. So if it's, if it's the Otolithic, if the otolithic crystals, if that's the problem, this will respond quicker. If it's a disorder like dysfunction of the pattern and signaling, it'll take a little bit longer because we're going to create neuroplasticity within this normal pathway to reestablish it with the central um, vestibular nuclei. Mm -hmm. All right, awesome. Let's go to position four. So we're going to try to keep you extended like this. So swing the legs over to the left, nice and slow. We're going to so kind of sitting up. Right? Yep. Nice and slow. I'm kind of letting you keep your back here. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And turn her a little more to the left. Yeah, oh, excellent. Well, that's right. I'm trying to help you back. Yeah. Yep. I was trying to tuck. I know, I know, yeah. <laughs> that's all right. That's opposite, right. Everybody opposite, tries to right? help, and <laughs> you're doing great. Doing great. How do you feel coming up? Uh, good, actually. No dizziness. Excellent. So I don't keep them in that one too, too long, and then I'll just bring them up into neutral. <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah, that was something. Right. And same thing happened in the other one, right? So it's those crystals draining. If if those if and that might be indicative of those crystals. Might be a few in there. Some people just have more propensity towards developing or not develop we all have those crystals in our inner ear. They're, they weight the uh, the uh, viscous fluid, the uh, endolymph in our vestibular system, but uh, they can get loose, you know, for whatever reason. Dehydration, flying. I guess I don't need to keep filming you. Sorry. <laughs> oh my God. Well, <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> so film me for just a second. So. So when you're when you're looking at the in the canals, what you want to think about is cups that you're dumping out, right? So the anterior canal is positioned here, and it's activated when I dump this cup cup out. So you want to put them like horns. So anterior canals, and then you have posterior canals. Okay. So the anterior canal is what I'm putting in a right anterior position. I've got to make sure I dump that cup out, and to do that, I have to essentially turn my head 45 degrees to the left and flex it 45 degrees, give or take. If I want to do the left, it's the same thing. If I want to do the right, it's the same idea. I, I tilt, I turn my head 45 degrees and I tilt 45 degrees back. 
So everything is kind of a generally 45 degree type angle, which you can play with a little bit. But think about dumping out these uh, cups of water and dumping out each one until you know you're in that right position. Good.